Hello everyone, welcome to Biotechnica. So today I will be talking about stegolactone phytohormone, which is an important hormone for exam point of view, whether it is CSINN, GATE, DBT and others. So here we all will be learning about biosynthetic mechanisms of this plant growth regulator, transport pathway, what is the signaling cascade as well as the functional profile of this plant growth regulators. So let's understand all these points one by one. So firstly coming to the introduction of this plant growth regulator that is Strigolactone. So if you see this Strigolactone, it is present in 80% of the plant species and they are the derivatives of terpenoid lactones. So what is terpenoid lactones? So terpenes, they are the class of secondary metabolite. And when these terpenes are oxygenated, they form terpenoids. Now when the terpenoids are combined with the lactone compound, they result into the formation of terpenoid lactones. And these terpenoid lactones act as a precursor for the synthesis of strigolactones. So they are known to uh, infect the roots of the plants. So they are known for root parasitic infections because they reside in the root of parasitic plants. So from where they are secreted, they are secreted from two major plants that is striga species which is also known as witch weeds and also broom rapes which includes orobanke as well as phalifanke species. That is why they are known as strigolactone because they are derived from striga species and they are the group of lactone compounds and that's why they are called as strigolactone phytohormones. They are discovered for the first time in root axodates because they reside in the roots of parasitic plants and hence they stimulate the germination of seeds. So this is all about introduction where you have to learn about the derivative that is terpenoid lactone. It is responsible for causing infection in root parasite as well as where it was discovered. It was discovered in the root axodates of striga species as well as broom rates. Now let's come to the biosynthetic mechanism of this plant growth regulator. How actually the synthesis of strigolactone takes place inside the plant cells. So if you see this strigolactone, it is derived from the carotene bioprecursor that is what called as carotenoid in the plastid. And this ends up to the synthesis of intermediate that is carlactone. So this intermediate, it is formed in the plastid. Beyond this, the strigolactone synthesis, it takes place in the cytosol. So firstly, what happens? The beta carotene, which is a carotenoid precursor, it is in the transform. This transform is converted to cis beta carotene in the presence of carotene isomerase enzyme. In the presence of carotene isomerase enzyme, which causes the conversion of trans beta carotene inside the plastid into the cis beta carotene. And once cis form of beta carotene is formed, it is oxidized in the presence of dioxygenase enzyme and is converted into carotenol and ultimately results into the formation of intermediate that is carlactone. So till here the initial step of synthesis it is taking place in plastid and once this intermediate is formed it is diffused into the cytosol where it is acted upon by the enzyme that is MAX1 which converts this intermediate into 5-deoxystrogol. Now this is the precursor molecule for the synthesis of different type of strigolactones in the body. That is the plant body. So here you have to learn about the precursor that is the carotenoid precursor trans beta carotene which is responsible for the initiation of this strigolactone synthesis which is what called as beta carotene. And where this pathway is taking place? Firstly, the initial step of signaling cascade, it is taking place in the chloroplast that is plastid and the last step of signaling, it is completed in the cytosol which results in the formation of strigolactone. 
Now, once the stregolactone is synthesized inside the plant cell, now it's the time for the transportation of this plant growth regulator. So, how is actually transported in the plant cell? So, let's see the transport mechanism for it. So, this transport mechanism takes place with the help of a special type of protein that is ABC transported. So, since this stregolactone is lipophilic in nature, it can easily cross the plasma membrane bilipid layer. But for the transportation of this plant growth regulator, it requires a special type of ATP binding acid, family G protein, which requires the need of ATP for this transport mechanism. And how this is transported? It is transported from root to shoot because we have already seen that this hormone, it is present in the roots of the parasitic plants. So it is transported from roots to shoot with the help of xylem. And for this transportation, they need a special type of protein that is ABC transporter that requires the need of ATP because the name only suggests it's ATP binding cassette family G protein which is involved specifically for the transportation of stregolactone. So now coming to the signaling mechanism, how the stregolactone induced gene responses is seen inside the cells. So in order to start any signaling process, there is a need for the players of the signaling casket. So what are the two main players of signaling? One is ligand and the other is receptor. So in this signaling, stregolactone itself, it, it is acting as a ligand for this signaling mechanism. Then what is the receptor? It's D14 protein, which is also called as dwarf protein. So what happens when no signaling is activated means no ligand is present. So ligand binding will not take place with the receptor. That means signaling is shut down. But when SL that is ligand stregolactone is present, the signaling is activated because this ligand is specific for the receptor that is D14. So what happens if stregolactone is present? It will bind to its receptor that is D14. Now this D14 is in an inactivated state that is D14 only. But upon the ligand binding, it is converted to its active conformation, which is called as D14 star. Now this D14 protein, it is acting as a HCF complex. HCF complex, where S stands for SKP1 component, C stands for Qlin protein, and F stands for F-box protein. So the importance of this F-box protein is to add ubiquitin tag to the target and mark that protein for 26 as proteasomal degradation. So if this F-box protein is activated and it will act the ubiquitin tag to the repressor of this signaling mechanism. So suppose ubiquitin tags are added. Now this protein will be marked for degradation via 26S proteasomal pathway. And now the signaling mechanism is freed from any kind of inhibitor. So once the inhibitor is destroyed with the help of this F-box component of D14 receptor, so it's a time for the hydrolysis of the ligand. So the second target for this D14 receptor is stregolactone. So once this receptor or repressor, you can say, is ubiquitinylated, it will cause the hydrolysis of stregolactone. And this hydrolysis of ligand is crucial for the next step of the signaling cascade. So D14 hydrolyzes stregolactone and releases the product of hydrolysis. And from this, the gene expression will be seen and all the responses of stregolactone will be seen inside the plant cells. So what happened here? Firstly, the ligand will bind to its receptor that is D14. Conformational changes will get happen in the receptor and will lead to the production of or generation of active D14 receptor that is D14 star, which is also called as dwarf 14 protein. Now here the F-box component of this receptor is activated which will actually marks the repressor of the signaling cascade for degradation. And now the signaling is freed from any kind of inhibitor and we can say the signaling mechanism will be on or we can say the stregolactone induced gene responses will be seen inside the plant cell. But before this gene responses, there is a one final step where the happens 
the hydrolysis of stregolactone. So this D14 star only causes the hydrolysis of this hormone that is stregolactone and ultimately release the product of hydrolysis. So shall we say the pathway that this signaling mechanism employs is ubiquitin mediated 26 as proteasomal degradation because here the activated receptor marks the protein for degradation via 26S proteasomal degradation pathway. So this is about the signaling mechanism that the stregolactone employs in case of the plant cells. So now coming to the functional profile of this stregolactone. So now let's see the functions of stregolactone, what all functions it have in the plant body. So the first function of stregolactone in the plant body is to suppress the axillary bud growth. So what happens once the stregolactone is formed, it will induce the expression of BRC1 gene. This BRC1 gene is also called as branch gene. That means which will induce branching. So it suppresses the axillary blood bud growth and induces the lateral bud formation. It is also serving as a negative regulator for cytokinin synthesis. So if you see the cytokinin synthesis, there is one gene called as IPT that is isopentanyl transferase. This gene only causes the release or secretion of cytokinin in the plant cell. But this stregolactone will inhibit the synthesis of IPT protein. And if no IPT gene is expressed, so it will not result into the secretion or generation of cytokinin plants. So this stregolactone is known to inhibit this gene. And if gene is not expressed, how come the cytokinin be synthesized in the plant body? So it is also acting as a negative regulator for the synthesis of cytokine. And it also promotes the symbiotic association with VAM fungi that is vascular or vascular mycorrhizal fungi that is responsible for the uptake of phosphate in the plant cell where it also reduces the adventitious and lateral root formation and it also promotes the root hair growth. So what all growths you can see from roots are root hairs. So it promotes the formation of root hair. It also helps in the apical dominance process. What is apical dominance? A phenomena which causes the central stem of the plant to grow and inhibit the lateral sideways growth of the plants. So this is the main function of auxin. So it helps auxin in the phenomena of apical dominance. It also helps in the root germination of parasitic plant that is the striga species because we have seen that this phytohormone like stregolactone it is residing in the roots of the parasitic plants and hence it helps in the root germination process. It also makes the plants adapt to various stresses. It can be biotic as well as abiotic. So this is all about the stregolactin phytohormone where we have covered the biosynthetic mechanism. We have seen the precursor that is the carotenoid precursor. The synthetic pathway is taking place firstly in the plastid and once the car lactone is formed, the last step of the signaling cascade is completed in the cytosol. It is transported with the help of ABC protein that is it requires the need of energy which employs the use of the xylem vascular bundles and it transports the stregolactone from root to shoot. And in the signaling mechanism, we have seen stregolactone itself is acting as a ligand for this pathway and the name of the receptor is D14 receptor. Where D14 ka F-box component is activated, which is known as MAX2, which will cause the degradation or ubiquitinylation of the re repressor and free this signaling pathway from any kind of inhibitor. And once the signaling cascade is free, it will cause the hydrolysis of the ligand itself, where happens the induction of stregolactone induced gene expression. And lastly, we have seen the functional profile where it helps auxin in the process of apical dominance. It also helps in the root germination process. It helps in the phosphate uptake symbiotic relationship, it suppresses axillary bud growth and many other processes. So if you want to learn different phytohormones in a similar way, please subscribe to the channel that is Biotechnica. Thank you so much for watching this video. Meet you in the next video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye. Keep learning.